Right, so I've mentioned when planting a few different trees that there are some groups that I'm generally wary of because they tend to be quite flammable. Um, and that is true of the tree that I'm planting tonight, but the main reason I've avoided this gen so far is actually because of a little bit of uh, stereotyping on my part, which I didn't realise was quite inaccurate. So uh, eucalyptus is a huge genus of trees. Uh, it, it has quite a lot of species with quite a lot of diverse lifestyles. But when I was little, the ones that we had growing here were very very large, I can't actually remember the species name, but they were very large naturally swamp dwelling ones which were planted in large parts of Zambia effectively to dry out the soil to make places more suitable for agriculture by reducing how wet they were um, and they did that a little too effectively and some rivers actually have significantly reduced flow. That's not just down to the eucalyptus and they are sometimes unfairly blamed for that because clearing the land in many cases would have been more effective at reducing the amount of water so, so, so they are not entirely to blame for what we've done to our rivers here, but they are quite a contributor to reduced water compared to native woodland generally. Um, however, tonight's one is actually one that is from quite arid lands, and unlike the swamp dwelling ones which tend to be very bad at water management, very good at surviving once they've exhausted their water supply, the arid ones tend to be very good at water management. This is actually uh, Eucalyptus cenaria, I think, which grows in uh, sclerophyll forests, which are very sort of small leaf wattle and eucalyptus forests, uh, usually on hilly areas, in areas that actually get less rainfall than we do, so it, it's very good at well drained soils without much rain and with quite a seasonable canopy piece. This is going under Delanix Regia, where we'll go from very, very dark shade when we have got rain to very little shade when we haven't because they really completely drop their leaves, which has been an issue which I have brought up before. Because this is a fairly hardy and toxic plant, it shouldn't need much in the way of companion plantings, but because it's quite small and quite uh, sort of floppy still, uh, I'm going to be giving it a piece of the Dracaena fragrance variant Missangiana, uh, which it can then sort of lean on until it's sort of woody enough to stand up by itself. We're also going to be giving it a little bit of a succulent ground cover in this same area in the hopes that this Calanco delegoensis will stand up to the Comalina communis which spreads into this area every rainy season. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Right, so that should be everything for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you haven't enjoyed it, thank you for watching anyway. Please tune in again tomorrow because we'll be planting something different. Uh, almost certainly something less flammable because there are a couple more flammable trees I would actually like to have. Um, but none of them that I've ever seen for sale.